I have memories of like listening to this tape, one specific tape. I really do want to find it. So yeah, these are uh, 80s radio recordings that I made. The 80s hip hop shows, I think almost changed the direction of my life. Wow. Late night, Tony Humphreys, Kiss FM. I'm just going through this tape and every song is just ridiculously classic. It's my beat. It's my beat. It's my beat. Ooh. New York City. Back in the day, just like you pictured it. Desperate, dirty, and divided. The city emerged from disco's heyday, hung over. Man, life in New York City in the 80s, night of the living bass heads. But beyond the burnout, across the boroughs, people started tuning in to a new sound. A sound that revolutionized music for generations. This is the story of that golden era of New York radio and the DJs that made it happen. If you were a young kid or a teenager looking for your soundtrack of life, New York was the only place really that you should be. Everything was going on and everything was sort of bubbling underneath. You know, you had us happening with underground stuff, you know, with Sam's Bar and the garage and these places. You gotta think of all different walks of life in the place where you live at New York. We learned how to make it sound like one big party. Black parties, especially, were very important. There was dudes walking around with big boom boxes playing music that didn't sound like anything I'd ever heard before. And I also can remember that being a specific dividing line between what my mom liked and what I liked. I can remember her saying, it's that bass. That bass just makes me crazy. And I was thinking, that bass makes me crazy, but like in a really good way. Prior to the 80s, the radio was dictating to the streets, but now the street was dictating to radio. TV wasn't doing it. All we had to grab onto in the 80s was a radio. Think about it. That's how you got new music. That's how you knew what was going on. Red Alert, you know, talking about, I'm at Union Square, I'm at the Latin Quarter. Like, I wasn't old enough, you know, I was like a sheltered little white kid. You'd probably have to drag me into the Latin Quarter. I'd be so scared. It was freedom to play what you want versus being tied down by the program director saying, look, you gotta play what we play. It was nothing that was off limits, put it that way. We changed the sound of New York. We actually did. Before three rival stations battled for control of the FM airwaves, one pioneering figure paved the way for contemporary urban radio. Frankie Crocker is the one who opened up commercial radio to hip hop and dance music. We all saw Frankie all the time in a lot of the clubs, the hottest clubs in New York. You know what this is actually, I'm about to spool up, is a Frankie Crocker demo tape. Oh, I love that show. Ah, oh, man. Now, on Stereo in Luck, WBR, is... the total black experience in sound. If we didn't have this guy and what he played, we wouldn't have what we're talking about today. And he put Paradise Garage on the radio. Larry LeVan would put a plunger on the top of it so Frankie couldn't see what he was playing. But Frankie would find out and get it on the radio. I'll never forget my grandfather came running in the room like, Mama, what's wrong? What's wrong? I was like, you can't believe it. They're playing hip hop on BLS. And he looked at me and said, what the hell is hip hop? <laughs> Hi, this is Frankie Corker, and this is another WBLS special feature. It's produced by our own Ted Currier. Ted Currier was influence, influence on all of us because he was sort of the first one to actually have mixing on the radio before we did like taking two records and riding them for, you know, three, four minutes. Two records playing at the same time wasn't something New York City had heard. There were always fluctuations in the tempo of a drummer. Through trial and error, I taught myself what records sound like when they're not in sync but close. I used my finger on the label. I would apply pressure to slow it down or push it forward. 
and you develop a skill where you can operate in synchrony with the revolution of the platter. And before it was noticeable to the listener, I could hear what was going to happen. A lot of the shows that are done are done at home in your studio. Then you bring them to the studio and you play them on reel to reel. I mean, I needed a space where I could crank up the music and nobody was going to call the police. And where I could work at night after midnight. There was a person named Joan. She had turntables and I would go over there to practice and do my shows. And then one day she said, a friend of mine wants to meet you. And I said, great. And it was Chef Pettibone. <laughs> Chef Pettibone, wow. Master mix, 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 mix. Do you know what that meant? Back in the day, coming through your box, screaming down the block. The purpose was to take the most popular songs that were on the radio and have a different version for our station versus anybody else. And you would learn the song. They'd be imprinted indelibly in your memory the way they played them. And then when you got the song, you would have to retrain your memory. Chef Pettibone was definitely one of the greatest mixers on the radio. I would chop up a song and add like a because I heard Chef Pettibone do it. The Latin Rascals took Chef Pettibone's tape edit creations to a whole new level. The Latin Rascals it had to be 1985. December 85. Those tape edits are just, I mean, mind-boggling. I mean, you can give some kid, you know, 500 records and, you know, a 10-week course at Dubspot in Ableton, and he's not going to be able to do what those guys were doing. I mean, it's just so funky, so imaginative. Sometimes the edits make it sound like a machine gun. <laughs> I went to City College Engineering School to become an electrical engineer, and then on my second year of college, I got stabbed in the back with a hunting knife as I was protecting my girlfriend. And I had kind of like an epiphany. What are you going to do with your life? I had a chance to think about it because I couldn't walk for six months. At that time, I bought a used reel-to-reel. -reel. I learned how to record my sets on it. And then I learned how to edit on it. I just found a way to make things repeat themselves, but also to take parts from other songs and then put them in the place where something would have repeated. A Puerto Rican guy named Albert Cabrera was doing everything that I was doing on a cassette tape. When Carlos de Jesus heard me play one of my tapes, he's like, dude, now who'd you do this with? I said, with him, this other Latin guy. And basically he put on my tape. They dubbed us the Latin Rascals. This is a Latin Rascals mix show from 85 playing your song. I love it. When I hear cats do stuff like that, that was the idea. I love it, man. My whole goal of arranging 10 minutes was to make sure that I put everything in this track so that it could be taken apart by DJs. I heard it on somebody's boombox, blasting it, you know? That's when I knew that something was happening. I think Set It Off was the perfect song because it was a perfect 808 masterpiece. So let me find a beat. That's where I know where his section is changing. So I would put that there. We started like putting a little hieroglyphics next to it to remind us that it was a kick drum versus the snare. And then we started cutting all these little pieces and some of them being very small. And I would have the kick drum taped to the wall there and I'd put like a little K and then you could tell by the length of it that I'd be an eighth note, half note, whole note, 16th note. And from there, I would just wind up taking copies and copies of these things and basically just have it available to me like somebody would have as ingredients when they're making cake. Now I'm just cutting two pieces together just to show you that they can be cut. It's inviting the seductive chaos to come to it because it's telling you to set it off. All of that in itself is what made us do the gunshot edits that we did for that song. Fluent in this musical language, innovative DJs carried the mix master torch into the midnight hours with three childhood friends at the center of dance music. My cousin is Tony Humphreys. Merle and Bob and myself were actually living next door to Timmy Regisford. 
and the three of us, you know, were fanatic music teenagers at the time. We could see each other out of each other's windows. But if we were ever, ever able to get on the radio, we were going to make it as special as it could possibly be. Kiss Master Mix Dance Party with DJ Tony Humphreys on 98.7 Kiss. Tony Humphrey was the master when it came to riffing dance and house music. Even now, he's he's better than like pretty much any DJ that I know of. So everyone would always be amazed that he would find these records that no one else could get. I remember being crazy, taking train rides from you know Brooklyn to the Bronx, buying punk rock records and all kind of crazy stuff back then. If you wanted to compete and get a job and hold on to a job, you had to know a variety of stuff. It wasn't you know one dimensional. When Timmy Reservoir first came to WBLS, he's working in programming. Timmy understood that it should be a show or a real performance. As Timmy started to learn how to DJ, Boy would come and start overdubbing over his stuff. Boy Jarvis did, like, great keyboard work on Timmy's shows. Timmy played record. I like it. I go, oh, hold up, let me put a solo over there, you know. First of all, you got to understand, this is the first time anything ever been done like that in New York City or anywhere else, where some guys playing synthesizer live over the radio. And everybody at the station was involved and loved it. That was a crazy, crazy combination. Mel and Bob, smooth. Each song, I would layer, and I would use sometimes three turntables. I would have two uh, reel-to-reels going, and I never wanted to be a lapse between one record and another. You're expressing emotion and you're receiving it back. Even if you're not in the club and you don't see it, you know it's gonna come because you've ex exuded so much emotion in making a mix. Meanwhile, hip-hop radio found its official voice. Don't forget, you can experience the world-famous Mr. Magic Rap Attack live with Molly Ma on the Wheels of Steel exclusively on the State of Fresh 107.5 WBLS. Mr. Magic was the go-to radio personality for hip-hop, hands down. It had to be around 1980. Mr. Magic used to come on late night. You start hearing the sound, the hip-hop sounds coming on radio. We embraced that oh so big. God. Basically, I met Mr. Magic through being an intern here at WBLS. Mr. Magic heard one of my remixes that we was doing at one of the promotions, and he was like, hey, why don't mine do that? I was like, hey, it's not a Molly Mall remix. He's like, wow, that's hot. I need that. I need to play it on my show. This is so funny because he throws on a Buffalo Girls remix, and he's reaching for the next record to play, and I'm like, that doesn't mix with that. He's like, what do you mean mix? So I turn around and grab a record, put it on the turntable, pitch it up, put it in tempo, and he slides the fader up. And it's a smooth, smooth mix. He's like, wow, people are not doing this in hip hop. That was my life. I, I made it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What's up? It's your weekend ritual. It's on. It's your boy, DJ Legend, a.k.a. Marley Mall. When Mr. Magic and Marley were dropping exclusives, musically, that was sort of the pinnacle of a Friday or Saturday night experience. The music would drop out, and you'd hear, uh, the world famous Mr. Magic Rap Attack presents Zen, Zen, Zen. The world, world premiere, premiere. World premiere, world premiere. That was, that was like, you know, everyone shut up, dive to the tape deck. So you had to cop. Ladies and gentlemen, the sounds you're about to hear is from Cool DJ Red Alert on 98.7 Kiss FM. Hey, Daddy, start it off like this. Red Alert style on radio, he would cut records back and forth. He would double up on records, but he was clean. His promos were so entertaining. His show just sounded like kind of a party on the radio. Hip hop people would not get into like dance records or disco records, and they had their little biases. The difference with Red was he would play both. <laughs> Which was wicked. The whole Zulu Nation was down at the Roxy Road Skate Ring. You know, we were being successful. We just launched some records out. Program director at the time, he came down. They wanted to add what they quote unquote called the street elements along with what they had. And that's when I came on. Red Hat, BDP, Molly had the whole Juice Crew. Magic was the voice of the city, and they paid attention to everything he's saying. But at the same time, he, you know, he was something else with that. That microphone, you know, he'll, he'll hurt your feelings. 
I never forget. I came into the office one day at the radio station. I said to the program director, I said, "Yo, man, you know, I come with the street mentality. Yo, magic over there dissing me." He said, "I understand you angry. You know, you feel why this man talking about you, but at the same time, he talking about you, he advertising you." I, I never, you know, the funny thing about it, I never listened to the, what they was doing. I did not get to pay attention to none of their work until way after. I always heard about them, and I know people had tapes of them because people used to always tape us all the time. You know, these tapes really made it to every corner of the world. I bugged out when somebody from London had one of my tapes. Wow, I mean, we're that popular. Them cassettes is what our internet was. By the end of the decade, DJs were bigger than just radio voices. They emerged as producers, performers, and icons. What you had in the '80s, you had people that were technically on top of the world. They were the best in what they did. Incredible taste, incredible breadth of knowledge, access to new music before anybody else, and the ability to put it together in a way that probably no one else could. It shaped the music industry. It shaped what. We listen to today, you know. You've been tuned into Revolutions on Air, and I'm your hostess with the mostess, MC Light. Keep it locked. Roll call: Larry Levan, T. Scott, Larry Patterson, Jelly Bean Benita, Dynamic Duo, Aldo Mary, Jose the Animal Diaz, John Morales. Sergio Munzabai, Bobby Condors, Junebug, Africa Islam, Jazzy J, Chuck Chilla, the world famous Supreme Team, Awesome Two, DNA and Hank Love, Pete Rock, Kevy Kett, Clark Kent, Barry Mayo, Frankie Crocker, Ted Currier, Shep Pettibone, Tony Humphreys, Timmy Register, Merlin Bob, Boyd Jobs, Latin Rascals, Mr. Magic, Molly Mark, Red Alert, to all the other DJs on air. Rock on, rock on! You are appreciated. Thank you. Break them records.